Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this video I'm going to talk about acids, bases, and pH. If you ask people what pH measures, they'll usually say um, if something is an acid or a base. And they might know that, that water has a pH of 7, that acids are generally lower than that, and bases higher than 7, but that's where a lot of people's understanding ends. And so I kind of want to explain to you uh, what pH is and how it's determined. But before that, I want to tell you why it's important. I'm a biology teacher, and so everything kind of goes back to life. And so this is a protein. It's called myoglobin. It's found in your muscles, and it's going to be most active at a pH of 6. It's going to work at a pH of 5 all the way up to 7, but if we start to move our pH too low or too high, that protein's going to denature and our muscles aren't going to work. And so it's important that the pH levels remain relatively constant and they're not changing that much. But what is pH? Well, we've got to start by talking about water. And so this is a water molecule. Remember, we're going to have hydrogen here, two hydrogen atoms, and then one oxygen atom. Now, one thing that you need to understand is that this is a polar molecule. And what that means is there's a covalent bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen, and between this hydrogen and oxygen as well. And oxygen is really greedy when it comes to electrons. It's going to pull the electrons towards it. And so this is a sharing of electron between these atoms, but it's a polar covalent bond. And what that means is since oxygen's pulling the electrons towards it, it's going to have partial negative charge on this side of the oxygen, and then hydrogens are going to have a positive charge on the other side. And so if we were to add another molecule of water, these are not going to arrange this way. And in fact, what we'll have is that they'll be arranged like that. And so the hydrogen atom of one water molecule is going to be attracted to the oxygen of another. And that bond is called a hydrogen bond. A lot of students think that hydrogen bond is in here. No, that's covalent. But the hydrogen bond is going to be between the positive hydrogen partially positive, and the negative oxygen. And that's why if we have one water molecule and the hydrogens are like positive and the oxygens are negative and we have another one, they're going to line up like this. And as I pull one water molecule, the other one is going to go along with it. And that's why we have cohesion and it explains a lot about water. But some weird thing happens with water. Sometimes that attraction is so great that this hydrogen atom will actually become detached from the water and it'll become attached onto this other water molecule. That would be like me pulling this pinky off and attaching it over onto this other water molecule, leaving me just with this. And so what is that called? This is called hydronium. Hydronium is going to be H3O and it's going to have a positive charge. What are we left with over here? This is a hydroxide ion. And so what is pH a measure of? Well, the P stands, we think, for the power of hydrogen. In other words, the amount of hydrogen. But it could also be the amount of hydronium or the amount of just free hydrogen ion inside the water. And so if we look at the power of that or the, almost the percentage of that, that's going to be what pH measures. And in regular water, distilled water, the amount of this occurring is really, really rare. In other words, it's a 1 in 10 million chance that we're going to have hydronium. And this is really a molar concentration. So to give you a sense of the scale, let's say this hydronium ion right here is represented with this little uh, cube. And so what I'm going to do is pull back. And let's say this is 1 cube and 10 and 100 and 1,000. And eventually what we get, if we scale that, you really can't see that cube anymore. But this would represent 10 million cubes. And so the chances of that one hydronium forming are going to be really, really low. But even though the probability of hydronium is, is, of forming is low, it actually occurs in water and it has huge um, impacts on things that are found within that water itself. And so that 1 in 10 million, I want you to think about that for just a second. And let's kind of add a little bit of the equation of pH. And so some kids get scared by the, the equation. It's not that scary. So pH, or the power of hydrogen, is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. It's also the same as the hydronium. That's at H3O+. plus. Those are essentially the same thing. So it's the negative log of that. And so it's the negative log, think of this as 1 in 10 million. And this would actually be a molar concentration, but we're keeping it conceptual right now. And so if we take the negative log of that, let's write 1 in 10 million in scientific notation. And so it's the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7. So this is going to be a really small number here. And this is where the math gets really easy. If you were to put this in your calculator, if we take the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, what do we get? 
7. And so the pH is going to be 7. And this gives us a number that we can actually deal with. And so what does it mean if the pH is 7? It means that the, the concentration of this hydrogen ion is going to be really, really small. And if we ever vary that, then we're going to be varying the pH. And so pH of 7 is neutral. But if we ever have a value greater than 7, it's going to be a base. And if it's ever lower than that, then it's going to be an acid. And so let's start by dealing with the acids. What's an acid that almost everybody's familiar with? That's hydrochloric acid. You'd find that in your stomach. And so if we add hydrochloric acid to water, it's going to disassociate. It's going to break down into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. And so you can see here that we're increasing the amount of this H+. And so what is that going to do to that concentration? Now instead of being 1 in 10 million, it might be as, 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 as often or as common as 1 in 100. And so if we were to write that as scientific notation, it's the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 2. So we would have the pH of 2. And so depending on the concentration of hydrochloric acid, we could have a pH of 2 or 1 or 3. It depends on how much hydrochloric acid is in there. Now let's look at a base. And so a base, for example, this would be sodium hydroxide or lye. Um, what's going to happen to that when we add it to water? It's going to break apart into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Now that doesn't help us remember because pH stands for the power of hydrogen ion. But what do you think is going to happen to that hydrogen ion that happens to be in the water? Now we've got a hydrogen ion and we have a hydroxide ion. And those are quickly going to combine to form water. And as it does that, it's going to gobble up that hydrogen ion. What's that going to do to the amount of hydrogen ion in the water, or hydronium ion for that matter? It's going to make it even more rare. And so now we have the pH equal to the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 12, for example. And so what's that going to be? That's going to give us a pH of 12. And so what does pH measure? It just measures the amount of hydrogen ions, or hydronium ions. And bases and acids are going to have different amounts of that. We measure that using a pH scale. And so distilled water is going to have a pH of 7. If we have anything higher than that, that's going to be a base. Anything lower than that, that's going to be an acid. But when you're taking a test, it can be somewhat confusing. And so let's say we increase the amount of hydrogen ions in a solution. So we're going to have more of them. What's that going to do to the pH? It's actually going to lower it. And vice versa on bases. And so watch out for that when you're taking a test. Why is this important? Well, acid rain is one example of that. Or the acidification of our oceans another, is another example. And so this is looking at the um, pH in the oceans over the last couple hundred years. And what we see is that our oceans are becoming more acidic. How does that work? You're combining carbon dioxide with the water. And as we increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, that water and the carbon dioxide are combining to make carbonic acid in the oceans. And that's increasing the acidity of our oceans. And so we could here see, see here <laughs> that the pH is decreasing. So we've seen a decrease of around negative 0.1 on the pH scale over the last couple hundred years. And you might think, well, that's not that big a deal. But remember, this is a log scale. So by decreasing it by a small amount in the pH, we're going to increase it quite a bit in the hydrogen ion. And that's going to affect anything living in the oceans. It could affect coral reefs. Um, and every time we have a mass extinction on our planet, it seems to be correlated with the acidification of our oceans. And so that's pH. It's pretty simple. And I hope that was helpful.